Today I talk about the universal cereal bus and what it means for everybody today. My name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, that are PC Horror Stories, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com, go to my website tqaweekly.com, and comments to each of these episodes that I do every single week, except for next week, because I'm actually going to take it off. I didn't take two weeks at Christmas, so I'm going to take this one next week off. And of course, you can always use the contact form to email me directly, and of course, if you're watching on YouTube, lip.tv, or anywhere else I post to every single week, you can always leave a comment down below. Today's topic is going to be like my PCI Express episode. It's going to be a clarification, an explanation, and basically keep your mind at ease when it comes to USB, the universal serial bus, which is what USB is for short. So first of all, when I was a kid, yes, I know that's a long time ago, we did not have USB. USB was introduced in the mid 1990s as a commercial product that could be used as opposed to COM ports and LPT ports and all that other stuff. Because back then we had a different type of connector for just about any other thing. And we could use other electronics with different types of ports, but we needed adapters. So eventually you could have about four adapters on a line, which is pretty cumbersome and not at all good looking and makes very hard to actually clean up your cables. So what ended up happening is they had to come up with a standard that was universal to everything. And considering that we were using serial buses, this one became called the universal serial bus, an industry standard since the 1990s. Now, obviously we did not have expandable memory outside of the computer at this time. So what this was used for was for printers and scanners and other devices. And USB is also capable of being used for networking and transferring of files from one computer to another. And the USB 1.0 X standard at that time was actually at 1.5 megabits per second or 12 megabits at full bandwidth. By no means fast according to our modern USB 3 standards, but still a lot faster than your conventional serial buses of that time. Now the reason why we still use USB to this day is because in April 2000, we had USB 2.0 introduced that allowed us to have up to 480 megabits per second, a lot faster than the USB 1.0 X standard. The cool thing is, is it was retrogradable, which means that any gadget that was either USB 2 or USB 1.0 X was capable of using the same port. And this is why we used it for over eight years without any issues whatsoever, until we actually started running out of time out of our day. Considering that even when the USB key came out, they were not 32 or 64 gigs in size. They were 128 megs, 64 megs, 32 megs, they were pretty small and transferring those kinds of files is relatively easy. But when we're talking about gigs of space, transferring of files could take hours. Now, we were on the verge of having different types of technology take over to begin with, including Thunderbolt. And this meant that there had to be another dramatic change to the USB architecture that did not alienate any other previous technology. Because like I just said, USB is retrogradable. No matter what gadget you have plugged in, it should work in those ports regardless of any of the other generational changes on it. So you could plug a USB 1.0 X device in a USB 3 port with no issue. But why? Well, in a USB 2 0.0 or 1.x device, there are four traces in the majority of these connectors. This being a flash drive, this being a USB cable that is used to extend, which by the way, this one is a modifiable cable. I can swap the ends if I wanted to. And what happens is, is those four traces are standard to all USB technology, whether it be 1.x, 2.x, or 3.x. So the 3.0 standard. 
That means that anything can plug into anything. But that is not technically enough because the technology also had to be retrogradable. Now, USB 2 and USB 1 don't have the same power requirements as USB 3. So USB 3 has a different type of connector. So while this will be the USB B connector for 2.0 and 1.0, this is the USB B, hold on, for the USB 3. Now, excluding the part right here on this side, that primary connector is identical. So while this device, this is a USB 3, will accept a 2.0 cable like this, and a 3.0 cable like this, much like PCI Express accepts it, because USB 3 does not have the same power requirements and therefore means that it would have more power go over the line, nobody can accidentally plug a USB 3 cable that is not intended to be used with a USB 2 device into it, it won't fit. This is intentional because it actually requires more power. This power delivery is actually made possible by the fact that we don't just leave the four generic traces at the same power requirements for USB 2 and 1.0, they add five other traces in these cables to allow for the extra power and bandwidth to be made possible while maintaining the fact that if you plug something that's USB 2 into a USB 3 cable, it will run at USB 2 speeds irregardless of the fact that there are five extra traces because the device itself does not connect to them. But if you were to plug a USB 3 device into a USB 2 cable, it will run at the speed of USB 2, even though there's five traces because the cable itself does not have those traces. Therefore, basically meaning, much like I said about USB uh, PCI Express back when I did that episode, USB itself, the universal serial bus, is cool and still used today because it's not just universal, it's retrogradable, irregardless of what kind of technology you have. And the cool innovation in it is the fact that if you have a cable that is capable of powering a device much more power demanding and you were to try to plug this cable into a device that does not require that much power, you can't, so you can't short anything by accident. And the way the plug-in interfaces are done, there's virtually no way that you can damage your equipment through this means. And all of it is interconnectable and interoperable at the same time. So. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, maybe something a little bit more advanced on this specific topic, you can always leave it down below if you're on YouTube, blip.tv, or Vimeo, or anywhere else I post to every single week. You can go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, and leave a comment toward this specific episode. That's tqwayweekly.com slash se4ep39. And of course, if you go to tqwayweekly.com slash subscribe, you'll have all the different ways of subscribing to this specific show through any means that you want, whether it be YouTube, Blip.tv, Vimeo, even our brand new secured RSS feeds. So have a great day. Goodbye and thank you for listening.